Awareness of the contents of the mind is a domain that brain science knows nothing about. We have awareness, but we have no idea where it comes from or what controls it. None of the mind's awareness can be found in the brain. And you also can't locate functions like creativity, intuition, insight, understanding, and the most important one, agency or control, meaning the ability to direct your awareness from this mysterious source called I. We have this amazing gift of being able to direct our awareness at will and use it to make things happen. But neuroscience is in complete darkness as to how this occurs. For example, if I say wiggle your toes, you can just tell your toes to wiggle and they do it. <laughs> Freaking magic! How the hell does that happen? We can map the neural signals in this, but we know nothing about how your awareness tells your toes what to do. Now let's say we attach electrodes to the part of your brain that controls toe wiggling. I could stimulate the electrodes and presto, your toes would be twitching the disco dance. They'd be wiggling and, and zwiggling. But here's where it gets interesting. If I stimulate the electrodes and your toes wiggle, you say, my toes wiggled. But if I say, wiggle your toes, and you do it intentionally, you say, I wiggled my toes. Whoa, major difference. In the former, electrode stimulation of the nerves was the agent of the action. In the latter, this mysterious force called I was the agent of the action. But you can't find this I anywhere in the brain. Who and what is this I thing? It's the mystery of all mysteries. In the 1950s, Canadian neurosurgeon Wilder Penfield, love that name, Wilder, a specialist in epilepsy and the father of modern brain surgery, demonstrated this. Sometimes brain surgery is done while patients are awake so doctors can communicate with them during the procedure. Penfield discovered that when he stimulated various parts of the patient's brains, he could induce a variety of intense experiences. Stimulate one part of the brain and they'd cry, another part and they'd hallucinate visions, another part they'd hear sounds or experience long-lost memories. The patients described these experiences as vivid and detailed, but said they were also acutely aware of being in the operating room, having their brains stimulated by electrodes. They experienced two simultaneous situations at once. For example, feeling sad while also feeling normal and observing the whole process as it happened. They were totally conscious of the incongruity of the two experiences, and after the operations, they remembered this double consciousness. What does this tell us? Penfield could stimulate various types of responses, sensations, movements of limbs, memories, emotions, and so on. But he couldn't stimulate agency. Patients still knew whether a movement was done by them or to them. A sense of will, free will, was beyond evocation by brain stimulation. Penfield began his career as a materialist, meaning that he thought the mind emerged from the brain, but this completely changed his viewpoint. He became a passionate dualist, meaning he concluded that the mind and the brain are two related but totally different things. Unfortunately, most modern neuroscience ignores Penfield's discovery. Sometimes scientists want something to be true or untrue and consciously or unconsciously steer their research to reflect this. One of the worst pieces of science ever produced is the reductionist idea that the mind is caused by the brain. I'm going to do a whole episode that goes into detail about this and how it demonstrates without a doubt that psychiatric medication is a completely misguided and actually harmful approach to dealing with bad states of mind. But I want to mention a few tidbits that are, are floating through my awareness right now. 
if ideas were stored in your neurons, how could you ever have a new idea? You just have to keep recombining old ones. Or do you think your brain decides what music it likes? Or what breakfast cereal you want to buy? Do you think your brain thinks? Your brain does none of these things. You do them. Your mind uses your brain to accomplish these things. Of course, there are experiments that have been interpreted to mean that artificial brain stimulation can induce agency. But yeah, they're interpretations and super dumb ones at that. I mean, some of the theories don't even make logical sense. Like, for example, the notion that all that really exists is the brain and the mind is just a byproduct of it. This is a classic self-refuting proposition. It says the mind doesn't really exist, meaning thoughts aren't real because they're just byproducts of brain activity. But this means that this very proposition is mindless <laughs> because the mind doesn't exist and therefore propositions don't exist and therefore the idea is meaningless. <laughs> it's just junk science. There's also a theory that says the brain and the mind are the same thing. But this is also logical nonsense. Every attribute of the mind, perception, reason, emotion, and everything else we experience can only be described by using experiential language. There's nothing concrete you can touch or see or measure in the outer world. This is the complete opposite of the physical brain, which is described in terms of matter, extension in space, physical mass, and so on. Mental and physical states interact, but they don't share any of the same properties. You'll never find your experience of a breathtaking sunset or an insight into the spiritual meaning of your life by examining a slice of brain tissue. They have nothing to do with each other. 